Greetings, viewers. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to just jump right into the topic and reference a situation that happened on the 13th of October after a home game in Baltimore, Maryland, which was a football game of the Ravens versus the Commanders. The Ravens ended up winning. A video went viral of a man. This particular man was a Ravens fan and then two other young men who were Commanders fans. So this Raven fan, his name is John Callis, and he is depicted and shown in this video, um, essentially at Cross Street Market. It's more so just the area of a lot of bars, some clubs, some rooftops. It's basically where a lot of people tend to go to have drinks, have food, entertainment, meet up with some friends, especially after certain games. They just like to flood the downtown area because the Inner Harbor is basically dead. It's not even on life support in anymore. But yeah, let's go back to the story. So John is at Cross Street Market and the video depicts him knocking out two of those Commanders fans. And then John is basically just walking off flexing after the assault took place. Do we got a straggler? Do we got straggler? Do, do, do we got straggler? Do we got do we got straggler? Do we got a straggler? Do we got a straggler? Do we got a straggler? I don't lose. Yeah! Let's go. Let's go. This incident ended up hitting social media and it garnered a lot of praise among some Ravens fans and other residents of the Baltimore area. And kind of some questions that came to my mind was like, why would this man take it upon himself to assault these two little ass men? Apparently he's in his like early 20s. So and also the victims are like around the same age. He's like picking on these men. <laughs> I thought that was like really cowardly of him. I was just like, why are people praising this incident? A lot of the comments on these certain posts, especially like local news areas in Baltimore, were like praising him for knocking them out. And they were like, oh, yeah, like this man, he invited to the cookout. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Why in the F are y'all inviting people to the cookout? Is this what y'all want to promote? Is this what y'all want to highlight as something that we in the black community accept. I'm going to refer to we, even though I don't attest to these type of cookout invitations. It's very menial in my opinion. John has since been arrested and he lost his job and insurance. So with this situation, it's even more outrageous. And I don't even want to say outrageous because I'm not outraged by the situation, but I guess a lot of people were shocked. Don't know why. But John had some resurfaced photos of him dressing up as Freddie Gray and mocking other black people who have lost their lives while in police custody. Yeah, it's very distasteful. And this kind of just this whole situation just seems to play out time and time again of a white person getting invited to the cookout among the black people and the black community, my community, our community. So he gets caught with these resurfaced photos. And it just kind of seems like anytime situations like this happens where black people are continuously inviting people, Caucasians to the cookout, they always get caught up with like some old resurfaced photos of doing blackface pretending to be black in a very offensive manner. Now, local social media caught wind of this and immediately started backpedaling. See, and this is the problem. Black people thrive on white validation. From my experience, the cookout is supposed to be kind of this exclusive, fake pseudo event. All in all, the cookout isn't even a real thing. Like obviously black people are not gathering these white people who have been inducted into black society. They're not grabbing these people up and literally inviting them to the cookout. This is just some sort of rhetoric where black people will invite white people or other people from different races if they, you know, play up to black stereotypes. If they're shown online dancing, if they're like around other black people or they're saying slang that normally black people would say in a black tone. So pretty much it's very like menial tasks and menial 
it, it's extremely performative. And not only are the white people performing, but the black people are also engaging in the performance and themselves jumping up and down, clapping, hoorahing. And quiet as it's kept, some black people should not be at the cookout. I know y'all heard that saying of all skin folk and kin folk, and it is very true. A lot of black people just don't belong at the cookout because of difference of opinions and just the way that they carry themselves. And honestly, in my belief, black people who are inviting other races to the cookout over very small tasks, some things that don't even matter, that don't hold weight in the community, these people should not be invited to the cookout. Black people need to be more militant in who they accept into our community. The way that black people are continuously allowing other races to infiltrate our community and inviting people to the cookout. Hell, aren't y'all the same people complaining about the new generations and how there isn't enough quote unquote cookouts and y'all want to keep inviting other races to our spaces? Our people aren't even getting invited to the cookout because the older generation is getting old these new generations, they ain't cooking, they ain't gathering. We going to the club or we going to some concert or event. It, it ain't no cookouts. And the way that where you need to have that cookout usually takes place at a home. Have y'all seen the prices of these homes that we, the new generation, are supposed to be buying up? I know I damn sure can't afford it. Can y'all? Yeah, the cookout is literally a fictional space where black people categorize other races, specifically whites, and acknowledge them for their menial tasks or actions of acceptance, which is so ironic because it's like, come on, white people get invited to the cookout for the most low level, basic, common decency type shit. They're invited to the cookout if they see black people as human beings or again, going back to that whole holding weight in the community, the things that black people hold weight or praise in the community I think some of the subjects are very, very questionable. And it also speaks to the character of us and what we deem as acceptable, what we deem as popular. There needs to be a deep dive into that. But specifically, let, let's go back to this cookout. Then black people want to complain about like, oh, yeah, culture vultures. Stop trying to be black. Get out of our spaces. And it's just like, where are the gatekeepers of black culture? And the problem is. In black culture, it seems as though a lot of the gatekeepers are these entertainers. Those gatekeepers are the ones who have used white validation to get up into their space. So now that they're in that area, they have to be welcoming of white people. And I'm not saying I'm not saying that white people should just be excluded from black people. Like, obviously, we live in America. I personally love this country and I am proud to be in quote unquote African-American. But... I feel like black people do need to be a little more exclusive in the things that we do. And we do need to have gatekeepers of what we want. And we also need to have filters. Like we need to start pushing a lot of the narratives placed on us out because black people are not a monolith. We are not who other races who associate, them, associate themselves to racist ideologies. We are not, all of us are not the same. We aren't this cookie cutter race. I know it may seem that way, especially for other races who have not been around a black person at all in their life, or they're just not accustomed to black culture. There can't possibly be gatekeepers of black people or black culture when we thrive off of acceptance. We thrive off of white validation. We thrive off of infiltration. It might not seem like we thrive off of infiltration, but when these races come and infiltrate the community, they exploit it. And overall, I also believe that black people, to a certain extent, are extremely exploitative. Once you already have that dynamic going on and that power struggle, of course, when these white people are into our spaces, they're going to be, quote unquote, culture vultures. But I honestly believe that black people need to grow a backbone and we need to grow a real sense of pride. If other races see us as a human or they speak positively to us, why can't we just sit back and let them speak and say what they want to say and just silently nod our heads like, OK, OK, good. That's how they feel. Great. And just move on with our lives. We don't need the whole like, oh, yeah, yo, you invited to the cookout. Yeah, get that man a plate. 
yeah, get them a black girl. We don't need to invite these people to the cookout. And again, I'm not saying that black people need to be exclusive, but to an extent, in order to protect our blackness, which we should have done from the beginning, we need to be a little more exclusive. Other races, they know if you're black or you're white, or they know if you're black or they know if you're of their race. Like other races are extremely exclusive, but black people, we have not gotten on that boat. We are to an extent inclusive and there are aspects in our community where we are exclusive especially when it comes to black hairstyles or black dialect but we really need to have a stronger hold and again a sense of pride because once you're proud of something especially if it's positive in the community you protect it a little bit more cover ourselves a little bit more and I'm all about unity but folks we need to be more militant have some damn pride. Protect your blackness. And don't get me started on Federal Hill, Cross Street, and in that community. And all those bars down there. I have seen so many videos coming from Federal Hill of white people just casually saying the N-word. Or treating black patrons a certain type of way. And the thing about Federal Hill is in that community is the whites get really turned. And their racism becomes more apparent. You know, the drunk mind speaks truth. We need to have a lot more pride about the things that are positive in our community. And we need to build what we already have and what we are strongest at in our community and just build that up. And that's the thing, like not a lot of people are really moving and stepping for blacks. And we don't need other races to do that. We need to do it ourselves. Meanwhile, the solid allies are overlooked because I think it's a very distinct difference between people we are inviting to the cookout and the real allies. Because, and again, these allies or the people invited to the cookout do not need to be highlighted. We do not have to put these people on a pedestal or praise them or clap or shuck and jive and dance and lose our minds over this. And me personally, I don't give people pats on the ass for doing basic shit, basic human decency, but I will lightly or privately highlight or notice historical or or current whites who are vocal about changing policies that could help advance or limit barriers to blacks gaining necessities. I'm all about that, but I'm not sitting up here losing my damn mind, inviting nobody to no cookout because the cookout is over. It's done. We've gotten to the point where black people invited so many white people to the cookout or other races to the cookout where the, the cookout ain't even black no damn more. Y'all didn't whitewash the cookout because y'all are inviting too many other races into our spaces. The cookout is supposed to be a place where, you know, black people let their hair down and we, you know, have discourse amongst other black people. And granted, I absolutely believe that certain people of other races should be a part of our conversations and hear what we're saying, because that's how we really gain inclusion. That's how we include other people, because contrary to other people's opinions, I actually feed off a lot of people's opinions that are different from mine because it helps me build an unbiased. It helps me build stronger arguments. So I think that type of discourse is good, but there's a space and time for that. At the Black Cookout, I just don't believe that that should take place there. This is supposed to be a very informal event. Going back to this particular case with John, Black people should have turned a blind eye or completely deemed this man as a trashy person because he's really a weak, fragile man. If you got to knock out two of the weakest people in the crowd, then you yourself, you are a weak man. What happened to just being like, under the comments of that video, what could have been like, oh God, what a thug, what an animal, look at this criminal, lock him up. Like, I love seeing comments like that. But no, he's seen as like this badass brawler, he gets praise until they see the pictures of his past and now black people are backpedaling, they don't have no comment. The black people who are like, yeah, you know what, stop inviting these people to the cookout, they're dominating the comments saying, look, we told you so. Stop being so open for white validation. Y'all love when white zaddy is praising y'all or he in this situation, John wasn't even praising. He was literally being violent. 
And black people chose this opportunity to attach themselves to this type of behavior. And they just don't understand how damaging that can be. We need to disassociate ourselves from this image. And I get it that in certain communities, especially in the impoverished poor black areas, okay, yeah, that's seen, but we cannot applaud other races for doing things that could potentially align with our narratives. Other races do not do this. They know their people and they are not sending invitations, especially to black people, into their community. And I know black people think it's so beautiful to be so open and accepting. And we pride ourselves on this like, oh, black people are the most accepting group of people. We need to scale back. But yeah, guys, let me know your thoughts below. Um, and thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Maybe give me, share your opinion of how you feel about the cookout. Like, what does the cookout mean to you? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with y'all? You niggas are crazy!